motor is dead. That's right, it is fried, unusable. This thing is a paperweight. Now, how did that happen? Well, I know I promised a test ride, but I got the chain on here and it fit right away. I didn't have to modify anything. This chain fit this sprocket set up exactly. So this bike was ready to ride and I was excited to ride it. So I figured I would take it just on a quick test ride and then bring it back and then record an actual test ride video. But as soon as I took it out, I noticed that there were some problems. The motor was not performing well. It wasn't really giving me nearly as much power as I would have expected. And although I was riding on the low and medium power levels, even for that, it was pretty underwhelming. So after riding around for a little bit, this thing cut out entirely. It wasn't working at all. But then when I opened the Far Driver app, I noticed that the, far, the controller was enabling temperature protection for the motor. In other words, the motor was overheating. So it was strange that the motor was overheating when I wasn't really riding this thing very aggressively at all. So for one, I discovered that I was using the wrong temperature sensor for this motor in the Far Driver app. There's a number of options that you can choose in the app and the one that was selected was not the correct one for this motor. Now, I tried to change the option, but there's some bug in the Far Driver app that wouldn't allow me to choose the correct temperature sensor. I was able to choose some of the other options, but not the one that I needed. So when I reached out to QS Motor for support, their suggestion to resolve the issue was just to turn off the temperature sensor, which is pretty crazy. That's like if you have a fever and your doctor's like, yeah, well, just stop taking your temperature, right? It doesn't really address the underlying problem. And there was another issue as well. So in the Far Driver app, the number of pole pairs in the motor was set to four, but this isn't correct. This motor has five pole pairs. But when I attempted to change that value to five, I would get another error. In other words, another bug in the Far Driver application. Now, when I brought this up to QS Motor, they actually told me that this motor has 16 pole pairs, which is just nuts. That makes no sense whatsoever. And then when I sent them a screenshot of their own website showing the section that indicates that this motor has five pole pairs, they corrected themselves to say, oh yeah, it has five pole pairs. In other words, I don't know who is actually responding to your messages on AliExpress, but they don't seem to know what the f you're talking about. I also reached out to QS Motor for support via their website, and I got a response from Vincent here, and I'm just asking Vincent about the pole pairs problem. Why is it say four in the app if the, the motor has five pole pairs? So Vincent basically said that pole pairs in the app is, it doesn't matter. All right, check the RPM. This this uh, 2.6 refers to current limiting in the QS motor uh, manual. But I'm just saying like, okay, well, uh, why does it not matter, right? If it's showing four in the app and it has five fold pairs, I don't get it, why it should say five, right? So basically he's saying that it's just showing wrong. It's only a showing bug. It's a bug in the app where it's showing wrong, but it's actually set correctly. And as far as I understand it, he said that the number of pole pairs is set automatically when you run the auto learn procedure. And even though it's not showing correctly, the pole pairs thing is fine. Okay. And then I asked him about the temperature thing. The fact that I can't set the correct temperature sensor, right? I made it pretty clear that I can select these, but I could not select these. Of course, number five here being the one that I want. So he goes, it's their mistake. Choose number three. This is actually for this one. So he's saying that number five, the one I want, actually is number three. Okay. Here's the thing though. When I set the temperature sensor to that original one, KYT84130, it shows 106 degrees Celsius at room temperature, which of course can't be the case. So this just proves that this temperature sensor selection is incorrect right it's reading data from a particular kind of temperature sensor and it's misinterpreting that data to read a higher temperature than it actually is you could see here that the mosfet temperature in the controller is 28 degrees celsius which was the actual room temperature when i took that screenshot so this should say about the same as this so i brought that up to him 
and he said, please send a picture of the parameter page. I will check the program version. And I just sent him all my settings and just waiting on a reply. Where I went wrong is that despite knowing that turning off the temperature sensor was a bad idea, I figured, what the hell, I guess I'll just turn off the temperature sensor and take it for a ride and see what happens. And I was just kind of feeling the motor to see if it was hot because the temperature that was quoted previously when the motor was shut down was 160 degrees Celsius. So that's too hot to touch by hand. So because I was able to touch it and not really you know, be burned, I knew that it's not 160 degrees. So I thought, okay, maybe that temperature sensor reading was completely wrong and uh, the motor's running fine and I can just ride with, with the temperature sensor off for now. But I think it actually was overheating anyway, just not to that degree. Because when I put it in high speed after a couple of minutes of running, the bike just shut down. And I was like, okay, what the hell is wrong? So I was able to turn it back on. And then when I gave it some more throttle, I just heard a loud pop coming from this area and the whole thing just shut down. So then once I brought the bike home, I started looking into things. And I noticed that my short circuit protection on the BMS had activated. So I was like, oh my God, there's a short somewhere. And you know, thankfully the BMS uh, was able to shut down power from the battery to prevent the short from you know, just frying everything and starting a fire. So uh, I disconnected the battery, which cleared the BMS short circuit protection. And I just tested everything with a multimeter and there was really no short in the line, in the battery line anywhere. So then once I reconnected the battery, everything was working. I was able to turn on the bike, engage the contactor, but when I turn the throttle, You just get that. So that was 15 beeps. And if you look in the manual for this controller, 15 beeps indicates basically short circuit protection from the controller. So there is a short somewhere in this line, but it has to be in the motor. The working theory is that this motor was indeed overheating and at some point it got so hot that the enamel on the copper windings inside the motor melted and that caused two of the phase lines to short, two or more at least. So that's the idea. This motor is shorted internally and there's no way to fix it without taking this motor apart and rewinding it. So what I did was order a new motor and also a new controller just to be on the safe side because just in case there's some issue with this controller, perhaps the controller itself was the reason that the motor was overheating. Um, you know, it's just sending it bad phase signals that is causing it to produce more heat than necessary in its operation. So I bought both things and um, I'm gonna to have to replace the motor and controller and I guess try it again. The other thing is that I'm actually overvolting this motor. As you can see, this motor uh, says QS72 V4, etc., etc. Basically, it's rated for 72 volts nominal. So that implies 20S lithium ion battery is 72 volts nominal, but I'm running this on a 24S system, which is actually 86 volts nominal. So 3.6 times 24 is about 86. So I am overvolting the motor, but by a very small margin, 72 versus 86. And of course, uh, 20S 72 volt system fully charged is 84 volts. So there should be no reason that my 86 volt system is having any substantial effect on a system that would be that should be able to handle 84 volts fully charged and that's besides the point because even though my battery fully charges about 100 volts there are a lot of people on the internet that are running these things at 24s uh, some of them are liquid cooled but they're also using much higher current controllers even going up to 1800 volts so there should be no reason that i can't run this at 24s with uh 530 phase amp system. Then also when I was talking to QS Motor for support about this issue, they mentioned that I have to take the controller and lower the current, limit the current to 100 amps line current, which is pretty low. This controller is capable of 250 amps line current, but they said that because I'm using a higher voltage battery, 
I should limit the line current, which does make sense because if you have more voltage and limit the current, you can achieve the same power level. But again, the math doesn't quite work out because if I'm running this at 72 volts nominal and 250 amps on the line, that works out to be about 18,000 watts, 18 kilowatts. But when I was riding this bike, I wasn't even drawing full power. I had the, the graph from the BMS showing that I didn't draw any more than 150 amps from this controller at all. So if I'm running 150 amps at 86 volts nominal, that's only about 12,000 watts. So it doesn't really explain why this motor would even overheat because the power that I was running was substantially lower than the power that the system is designed to handle. But of course that was the QS motor support from Ally Express. But then when I was talking to Vincent, he actually mentioned that I don't need to limit the line current. All I have to do is to run the auto learn procedure and I should be good to go. So basically I got effectively no help at all. And you know, in my estimation, it was just a faulty motor or controller. So uh, what I'm showing now is the new motor and the new controller. So hopefully this system will work. I'll be able to set the correct temperature sensor and everything should work. I'm definitely not gonna turn off the temperature sensor this time, even if it is overheating, but hopefully this second go around is gonna work a lot better. And I could actually have a bike that I can ride without issues before long.